Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student working at the University of York and with the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy on Diverter Plasma Physics. Today is Friday the 16th of December. I hope everyone is having a safe and happy holiday season and I'm here to give you a very special episode of Fusion News. That's right, because this episode we are going to recap some of the Fusion News hosts uh, favorite stories this year. I don't know about you, but I think that 2022 has been the most memorable year for Fusion News to date. So I'm really excited to share with you our roundup for this year. But before we do, I'd just like to mention a very important story that released this week on Tuesday. The story was that the US Department of Energy and the National Ignition Facility announced on Tuesday that the National Ignition Facility achieved net fusion gain from their fusion experiments. This is really a monumental uh, record in fusion research. And for those of you who aren't aware, the National Ignition Facility is a facility in the United States that uses 192 high power laser beams to confine a small pellet of fusion fuel to the fusion conditions. Now, NIF has been in the news a lot this year, and rightly so. Earlier this year, it achieved both a record gain shot and proved for the first time that ignition conditions had been achieved in the laboratory. But on Tuesday, the National Ignition Facility announced net gain from their fuel. That's more energy out than they put into the fuel. Roughly two megajoules they inputted uh, into the fuel, the fuel received from the laser beams. And because of the fusion reactions, three megajoules were outputted. Now this is a historic record for fusion energy research, but also comes with caveats. This is net fusion fuel gain, which means that it's gain relative to how much energy was inputted into the fuel. That's not how much energy the lasers use. The lasers use a lot more because they're not, you know, 100% efficient. Still, this is an amazing achievement that demonstrates that gaining energy from fusion on Earth is possible. And not only possible, it's a reality. There is a lot more to be done before this process is ready to commercialize and sell efficient electricity on the grid. But still, it is a very important demonstration of the fundamental physics. So a very heartfelt congratulations from the rest of the fusion community to the National Ignition Facility and anyone working in ICF over the past few years. Right, without further ado, I'm going to give you our favorite stories from this year. Two, Tokamak Energy, SD80HDS, hailed as next step to grid fusion. This week, there are two stories from Fusion Industry Association member Tokamak Energy, a UK-based company working to develop a spherical Tokamak-based fusion energy reactor. You might remember that a Tokamak is a type of fusion device that uses super strong magnets to hold the fusion fuel in a ring shape to reach the conditions needed for fusion reactions to happen. The triple product, describes the combination of the temperature, pressure and confinement needed to achieve fusion, where confinement is a measure of how long a fusion plasma device can keep the fuel contained. Tokamak Energy recently presented data showing that they achieved a record triple product in their SD40 spherical Tokamak, measured at a plasma temperature of 100 million degrees C, which is several times hotter than the centre of the sun, in a plasma less than one cubic metre in volume. This is 15 times smaller than any other Tokamak which has achieved this temperature and it's a record triple product for any private fusion company. Tokamak Energy also announced that they're developing ST80HTS, the world's first spherical Tokamak to use high temperature superconducting magnets, which can operate for longer than conventional magnets without overheating. By increasing the length of a plasma pulse from less than a second to several minutes, the team expect to reach a triple product close to what is required for a commercial fusion plant once they start operating the new device in 2026. This will inform the design of the company's pilot plant, STE-1, which they hope will be the first fusion device to produce more energy than it uses and deliver clean, sustainable energy to the grid in the 2030s. Chris Kelsall, CEO of Tokamak Energy said, High performance in smaller spherical Tokamaks is the key to commercial fusion power. Our latest achievement further substantiates this optimal route to clean, secure, low cost, scalable and globally deployable commercial fusion energy. We're proud to have achieved this result in collaboration with the Princeton and Oak Ridge National Laboratories. Regarding SD80HDS, Kelsall went on to say that our roadmap for pioneering commercial fusion energy has the potential to deliver a game-changing solution. Our next high-field spherical tokamak, the SD80HDS, has the goal of demonstrating the engineering solutions needed to make commercial fusion a reality. 
providing the foundation for the global deployment of fusion power plants in the mid-2030s. This would provide humanity with access to clean, sustainable, on-demand and low-cost energy wherever and whenever it is needed. 3. Oxford Startup Claims Major Nuclear Fusion Breakthrough British fusion startup and FIA member First Light Fusion has demonstrated fusion for the first time using their unique approach to inertial confinement fusion, as reported in multiple news outlets. First Light's projectile design has been discussed previously on this channel. They use a high-velocity gas gun to hit their highly engineered target and compress deuterium fuel. Their fusion demonstration has now been verified by the UK AEA. Dr. Nick Hawker, CEO of First Light Fusion said, with this result, we have proven our new method for inertial fusion works. And more importantly, we have proven our design process. Four, MIT expands research collaboration with Commonwealth Fusion Systems to build net energy fusion machine, Spark. MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and FIA member company Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS, have finalized a new five-year agreement to substantially expand the fusion energy research and education activities at MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Center, also called the PSFC. The expanded collaboration doubles CFS's financial commitment to MIT's PSFC. It also enables further support towards spark science research, an increase in graduate students and postdocs, and additional support for interdisciplinary work towards fusion power plants. The ongoing collaboration and efforts between the PSFC and CFS has proven very fruitful leading up to this new agreement. Not only were the concepts of CFS's commercial fusion power plant, ARC, inspired by the principles of fusion engineering class taught by PSFC director, Professor Dennis White, but also, as our viewers may remember, the PSFC and CFS released fantastic news last year about the successful demonstration of the 20 Tesla high temperature superconducting magnet demonstration test. Bob Mumgard, the CEO of CFS and an MIT PSFC alum states, this has been an incredibly effective collaboration that has resulted in a major breakthrough for commercial fusion with the successful demonstration of revolutionary fusion magnet technology that will enable the world's first commercially relevant net energy fusion device, Spark, currently under construction. We look forward to this next phase in the collaboration with MIT as we tackle the critical research challenges ahead for the next steps towards fusion power plant development. And on a personal note, this news piece especially excites me because I consider myself a product of the initial collaboration between MIT and CFS. A big part of my doctoral research was funded by the initial collaboration between MIT and CFS, and I was elated to hear about this expanded collaboration which will increase opportunities, engage more students, and provide more educational opportunities in the fusion research industry for years to come. Five major breakthrough on nuclear fusion energy. A joint European Taurus experiment published data showing that they managed to produce 59 megajoules of energy with deuterium tritium fusion in a configuration made to mimic that of ITER, the international collaboratory project being built in the south of France. This five second plasma may not seem like a long time, but as Dr. Arthur Terrell, the author of The Star Builders, Nuclear Fusion and the Race to Power the Planet said, that doesn't sound very long, but on the nuclear timescale, it's very, very long indeed. And it's very easy to then go from five seconds to five minutes or five hours or even longer. When talking about these latest results, Ian Chapman, CEO of the UK Atomic Energy Authority said, these experiments we've completed had to work. If they hadn't, then we would have had real concerns about whether ITER could meet its goals. This was high stakes and the fact that we achieved what we did was down to the brilliance of the people and their trust in the scientific endeavor. We should also note that JET uses copper magnets. Now, we know that magnets are so important for confining the plasma in tokamaks. And we talk about using high temperature superconductors or even just normal superconductors on the show. And copper isn't either of those. It's a 40 year old machine and managing to produce a plasma and sustain it for five whole seconds is actually an incredible achievement. And these kind of results validate so much of what we talk in the public and the private sector about on this channel. And therefore it should be really, really exciting for everyone watching and for everyone in the field. It truly means that the roaring twenties for fusion are off to a great start. 
Right, well that's all for our very special episode of Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed, and I really hope you are as excited as I am about what's been happening in Fusion and the prospects we have for our future. But that might be hard because I'm very excited myself. As always, if you liked any of the stories in particular, the links will be in the description. And of course, follow us on our different channels and check out our Fusion News Extra podcast for a deeper dive into our stories. Happy holidays, everyone, and see you next year.